Okay, are Moleskine notebooks fountain pen friendly? <laughs> Unfortunately, I have no clue. So, I made a video about this Moleskine. This is an expanded Moleskine that I recently purchased at an airport in Houston on, or no, in New York on my way back home to Tucson. And this particular notebook is very fountain pen friendly. I then was so excited thinking that Moleskine has changed up their paper and made the video you are about to see here. Before we look at that video, please <laughs> keep in mind that I then posted on my Instagram talking about this new Moleskine paper and it seems that there is no certainty whether or not this is a new paper from Moleskine and whether or not all Moleskine notebooks will now be fountain pen friendly. There seems to be a great deal of inconsistency and a lot of speculation about the in inconsistency, some of which are there's different papers that Moleskine sources and so every notebook you don't know what paper you're going to get. Some of it is fountain pen friendly, some of it isn't. All speculation, of course, nobody seems to really know for sure. The other speculative theories that I heard were uh, that if you had a moleskin notebook that had little bookmarkers that unraveled quickly, your paper was a better quality. If you got a moleskin notebook that was manufactured in China, then there was a chance it would be fountain pen friendly. And if it was from Turkey or Vietnam, then it would just not at all be fountain pen friendly. So unfortunately, I don't have any answers. I wish I could be the bringer of good news and say, moleskin is now a fountain pen friendly notebook. But unfortunately, I am none the wiser. So. The video you are about to watch is me with the idea that Moleskin Notebook has changed their paper and so it's kind of in that view, in that perspective, um, and I apologize for any misinformation because there's a chance that this is just a lucky happenstance. I don't know. Regardless, I hope that you can still enjoy this video. Heading home from New York to Tucson, in the airport was a little bookshop, and within that airport was this Moleskine notebook in the expanded version. Now, Moleskine were my very first journal love. I've never really talked about that because I have been so in love with the Leutsch term journals for the most part over the years. These are my first Moleskine notebooks from 2017 and 2018. And I'm amazed that I used them for as long as I did because while I was using these notebooks, I was also using fountain pens. Now at the time, I guess I just didn't care, <laughs> but the paper was terrible for fountain pens. And all of my inks bled through the paper and feathered and just looked absolutely a mess. It was only later that I realized I could do better than this. And so I abandoned Moleskine and never looked back until this year, 2022, so many years later. I don't know what in prompted me. I just was drawn to the shape and the size of the expanded moleskin notebook. And because I've been using fountain pens with less regularity, I thought, why not give it a try? So I bought the notebook and I began writing in it right away. This is now my current journal. And I am so happy to report that somewhere between 2018 and 2022, Moleskine has reworked their paper and they are now mostly fountain pen friendly. So I will say the, the ribbons are not nearly as good as the Leutsch term ribbons. These ones are already starting to fray and I've only been using this journal for about a week. 
but I am still excited that I can use a fountain pen in this notebook. And as always, the neighborhood dogs continue to bark incessantly. I feel like they are just going to become a regular addition to all of my videos, assuming they are being picked up in the recording. And if they're not, I assure you, they are barking nonstop. This Moleskine notebook, I think, has over 400 pages, so it is a hefty little bugger, but it is narrower than your standard size A5, which I find kind of charming. Once again, that little bit of like a, a holdable notebook, something that I like in the standard size. So let's do some ink swatching just to see how inks behave in bigger quantities on these pages. Now, I would like to compare with the new Moleskine, old Moleskine, and the Leutsch term, and I will say that none of these papers are really ideal for ink swatching anyways. They don't really showcase the characteristics of an ink that well. But if it's something you like to do in your journal every once in a while, then I think it's fun to have a sense of what to expect. So this is a Schwimmer ink from J. Urban. And then we have a Sheening ink by Diamine. And a Shading ink from Noodlers. So here we have the new paper. And as you can see, it actually behaves pretty well. There is not really anything exciting though. You can't really see the Sheening and the Shimmer is pretty dull. And the shading just didn't happen at all. In fact, it was with that noodlers, we get the most bleed through on the paper. But in comparison to the old Moleskine paper from 2017 and 18, where the inks don't even behave at all, I think that's pretty darn good. And just because here we have the Leutsch term paper. The inks probably fared the best, although still, it's not the greatest paper for ink swatching anyways. But there's no bleed through on this paper. So I think this one did the best. I kind of expected that. But regardless, this new moleskin you can write in it with ease with a fountain pen and not have to worry about your words bleeding through to the other page. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad they changed their paper. I like this fat journal. Makes me happy. Thank you all for watching and I will see you all later. Happy writing.